Here we go, there's a good Gaussian, got some quite nice funky things, got obviously a nice big uh, Lichtenstein over there. These two uh, freaky things which obviously are causing quite a lot of entertainment with the uh, people wandering around. And I think that is probably an Andy Warhol lurking up there with a bit of camouflage on it. A bit of a uh, Gerhard Richter at the Gaussian as well, looking a uh, little bit dodgy in real life I think, the edge of this. Uh, Canvas looks a bit kind of, uh, I don't know, it's a bit sort of thin, I'm not quite sure that's the right word, but um, I don't know, if you're going to spend like 8 million or whatever one of these things would be, it looks a bit, um, I don't know, cheap. And there's a bit of a uh, Damien Fish Hurst that goes in as well. Here we go, here in the white cube a uh, bit, a uh, bit of Gilbert and George there. Whitey bit actually leaving me a little bit lacklustre. And this must be Cupid's Lie. This looks like one of Damien Hurst's new sort of weird manufactured, potentially come out of the bottom of a ship things. And here's a, a good one for this place. Money creates taste. These are little like marble seats. It is man's fate to outsmart himself. It's quite a funky giant photo over here of um uh, what do you call them? Those things that uh, make energy out of light somewhere. But here's a quite a nice Thomas Schubitz. Schubitz. I always quite like those paintings. A nice bit of a Sigma Polka here at, oh here we go, I found it this time, Thaddeus Ropak. Um, quite a nice one. Now all this stuff here actually is, is good quality work by the people. So this one uh, amuses me, this one over here, if I can get to it. Uh, this uh, sort of wire head, uh, sort of 3D wire head. The thing that amuses me is here it is in, um, you know, Art Basel in some massive separate thing. But you wander around the affordable art fair and you see hundreds of things like this, just slightly smaller. So it's just, well, quite a lot smaller, obviously. So it's a bit like, you know, uh, it makes you question what really is the quality of work at these places. It's got some nice uh, Robert Rauschenbergs over here. Quite nice ones, these. And another one lurking around there. And another one over here. The whole thing is, um, it's in a you know, full-time purpose-built building, so it's actually got a quite a nice feel to it. This is a Daniel Richter. I haven't seen a Daniel Richter for years since I saw hundreds of them in a Cologne. This would appear to be, oh, Gallery Thaddeus Ropak. Anyway. Still sort of very Peter Doig-esque. What I always love about these high-end art fairs is there's never any sense that anybody's ever going to buy anything. All the transactional thing is kept to a minimum. There's just a few slight wooden tables with people chatting about things. It's not like uh, the affordable art fair or something where you can see the, the uh, credit card machines. It's as if nothing's ever bought or sold, although obviously Things are changing hands for vast amounts of money. A uh, nice big Jonathan Lasker up here at Thomas Schupp, Berlin. Um, they're quite funky, these big ones. Much more fun than the uh, little prints downstairs. I don't know, if you're sitting looking at it every day, would you like it more and more and more? I find the sort of oh, purposeful drab colours slightly irritating. So if you escape outside, this is the uh, outsider uh, sort of balcony bonanza area of this uh, gigantic uh, craziness. One of those uh, Philip Gustins when he was still doing the abstract stuff before he um, did all the other crazy things. It's actually really, really nicely painted actually. And lots of really subtle different colours in it. It's actually a really cool, cool painting. He's one of those guys. Um, name I've absolutely forgotten for the second. Sean Scully. I actually quite like this one. Sometimes I'm a bit left a bit cold by the Sean Skies, but this is actually quite a nice one. Big swathes of uh, colour. I just want to move backwards without crushing anybody. Um, big swathes of colour. And then this one here, Sergei Polyakov. It's quite interesting because uh, this is here, all fancy and special. It's not really, frankly, much different from Patrick Heron. But, um, I guess you're not going to get any Patrick Heron. Got some nice big um, 
Uh, these guys up here. And Alex Katz. Quite funky big ones here. Stand out really nicely uh, in the art fields. A lot they did at the last freeze actually. They stand out really well. Big and uh, striking. Especially that yellow one actually. Okay, so upstairs on the second floor we got more sort of uh, freaky stuff like, uh, I don't know what this is really, but um, freaky sort of green uh, thing. And then around here we got like a, a film of a, a deep sea diver doing something. Not entirely sure what they're doing. Um, and then over here you've got um, like a little um, freaky bit with uh, dangling stuff and little uh, cushions you could lay on. And then over here, there's a woman in that corner. I don't know if you can quite see it down there. She's over there doing a sort of a live performance. Here we are on the Victorian mirror bit with a um, bit of a Milton Avery uh, vibe going on here. Um, it's interesting, it's suddenly coming out with a more older, uh, you know, artist in the canon of stuff as opposed to something. Uh, more contemporary, which I think is quite intriguing. Um, bizarrely enough, what I spotted down here a second ago was actually a, um, uh, it's a little abstract, not an alien, I suppose you call it abstract, or maybe it's like sort of a, a seashore. Go into Maureen Paley and see what we've got here. Um, oh well, we've got Maureen Paley herself, right? It's a bit of an entertainment. Um, other than that, it's not doing a lot for me. This one is, uh, I've seen this guy before, Michael Kreber. I've seen him at the gallery. It is just one luxurious line on the canvas. Um, oh man, I mean, you really need to go for the title. The title is 00090. It's like a huge series of paintings, but on one level, you've got to say, for Pete's sake, it is just one line on a canvas. Um, oh, Tim Rowlands, that's more interesting. I always like that Tim Rowlands. Um, oh, there's a little bit of music and stuff on there. Uh, sort of actually getting me a bit better, actually. I kind of quite like that. This has got kind of music in the background. Chaos on top, sort of a bit of punk, punk art fun. I actually think that's not bad at all. Okay, quite like that. It's probably my favorite piece of contemporary art here today. Absolutely masses, masses of stuff. Didn't really get around all of it, but was absolutely interesting. It's got a much better vibe than like a freeze in London. Maybe Europeans are a bit more into looking at everything and uh, enjoying the whole thing in a less critical fashion. But um, no, it's really cool. It's got a really good vibe. Everybody seems into it. Look, there's loads of people coming in. Everybody's excited. Um, you have got that sort of fun bit down there for kids. I mean, it's kind of like a day out. But, um, and then upstairs you've got all the, um, the art. So um, really, really cool. You can see why it's like the Uber art fair in uh, Europe. But it's really cool. Okay, guys, so let's rock.